all right what is up you guys and of course welcome to the pokemon battle league season four draft analysis for scandinavian southlands hell yeah <laughs> kind of hard to make that follow naturally um well what to say well i gotta introduce the team i'm gonna talk why i drafted the way i did and hopefully to follow me of course this season because it's a very short season for obvious reasons Seven weeks before um, Sword and Shield comes out. Uh, might be longer, might be shorter, who knows. Um, but quite frankly, there aren't that many weeks to, well, make a season of something. But it's going to be interesting, to say the least. And for what it's worth, um, I'm while I'm recording this, we've already had a few battles already. So this is just really late. And, and that's how it is sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the team you see here is the one I drafted, and I'm going to go over individually one one by one, and this is the order I drafted these individual Pokemons. Um, it should be noted, uh, I had a Grand Vision that really, really backfire um, already, actually, I do believe, turn three. Yeah, I think so. And quite frankly, I didn't know what to draft, but I was looking over the point tiers, and for example here, Mega Garchomp was a tier 3 Mega Pokemon, so it was basically giving me more points to draft something better, or more in-depth in with the team, so um, that's what I decided to do. Uh, to, be, to be honest, Mega Garchomp is a very shaky Pokemon as a whole, it can provide a lot of things naturally, uh, but it also kind of stumbles. The reason you draft a Mega Garchomp is because of the attack power. The speed tier is, mm, is just there. Um, losing those 10 base speed really are significant for how Garchomp work. However, really good wall breaker, very good mixed potential attacker, much like here in Black actually, though this Pokemon at least have a physical damage output. Um, clearly worse stab though. Uh, Oh, yeah, and, you know, the, the defenses are quite fine. Um, nothing really to it. Um, the Pokemon I decided to draft that was with Whimsy card, and the grand idea here was that it has support with Tailwind. So, um, yeah, that's what was my idea. I wanted to get Tailwind going. Um, Whimsy card in its own right are a good offensive Pokemon. While its special attack is quite low, the stab combination of Fairy and Grass are really good. I think only Steel and Poison are the ones hindering that. Besides that, you hit everything for really good damage. Potentially fire also. I'm I'm lying to myself right now. But the reason I wanted this Pokemon is because of Tailwind and Prankster. Really strong speed to 1 in 16. Um, should work quite right. Uh, my Pokemon I wanted to draft afterwards was actually Lucario or Raikou. Both went round 2. And then people started to draft in Tyranitar. And then regular Tyranitar. So... And then he powder went too. So I was feeling, or somebody drafted, I do believe, Excadrill. So this is, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna I'm gonna cop on Gilith just to kind of ruin any top plans for any other team. This might have been a dumb idea, but as a whole, I like Gilith. I think Gilith works really naturally well versus a lot of Pokemon and teams. Oh, because in 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 the morning is not my strongest forte. But what I was going to push forward is the Gilead does his natural special defense and really high overall bulk. It should be able to do really good work even without any possible sand rusher. Since extra went, there really aren't that many things going for it besides the Pokemon drafted afterwards. Uh, and I drafted it only because of necessity, nothing else. But I was considering getting Sand Slash also, mainly because it would have been annoying for people to prep for that. But basically, here we are. And we did not get that. <laughs> so next Pokemon is Stoutland. Nothing to do with the fourth, my main man, my actually my first Pokemon that I got a significant league victory with. Um, it's always going to be remembered as that. I really hope um, Stoutland here brings it to um, Generation Eight, if anything. But it's going to push forward, of course, that it is a really good Sand Rush Pokemon. Um, its natural stab distribution with return is really good. And then overall, it has Intimidate, it has Scrappy, it has sets that are, while Orthodox, can work very well. 
you can be defensive. Look at those defensive stats. 85, 90, 90. There we if I want to go for left doors in Intimidate set, it's going to be just fine. But uh, of course, that's not what we're going to try most of the time, but it is a possibility. Then we'll follow that up with Galventula. Not sure this was the right route for me of taking. Uh, Galventula is kind of shaky. It isn't necessarily meeting my ends when it comes to electric type when it comes to speed tiers. 108, while strong, it's just very shy of its that or of some matchups. Uh, special deck Knight 7, it is slow, but due to its use with Compound Ice Thunder, it really has a natural high damage output, but uh, the special attack is definitely not the most interesting part about Galvinsha. The main reason you get this is because of stick webs. And um, Ribambi went way too early. Ribambi has been, would have been a much stronger uh, Pokemon for me for getting. Uh, I'm really sorry about joining. Uh, I really can't stop it. Uh, but what I was feeling was that if I can pull sticky webs with, to get it with Mega Garchomp, I, I'm, in, I'm in a golden spot where Mega Garchomp, if you can't outspeed it, you're going to rely on a possible um, um, priority to beat it. So I felt that that was going to be a good idea, at least at first. Uh, but it has, like I said, issues, and it's whether or not it stays due to those issues. We're going to follow that up with Victini. Victini, dear lord. Victini. What the hell is wrong with me? Uh, anyway, nothing to it. I really wanted Dormanitan. I should have that said. Um, Dormanitan went to Jubilee round 4. And I took a step back and just trying to see which other Pokemon that I could choose that are good in Tailwind support. Um, Victini is a monster in its own right. While it isn't as strong as Dormanitan due to the V-Create, it is absolutely having a higher damage output. But, of course, in the loss of defenses and speed. After using it. Besides that, huh? I, I mean, it got a broad move pool with Bolt Strike, um, Fusion Bolts. It, it, it's an interesting Pokemon. The Victory Star boost is, is already kind of shaky uh, accuracy on those moves, but quite frankly, it's an interesting Pokemon. I haven't used it in the League Environment before. I've told people to use it because it's really good to have it, like I said, it push forward my own <laughs> definition of it. But I like it. I'm, I'll have to get good use out of it. Um, my last Pokemon I got was followed up by Mamoswine, which went round, what is that, seven, something like that. It's It didn't get picked up, so I just thought, fuck it, I get it. Um, I had an idea of getting Frostless at first. But I was going over it, I saw, since I got, got sniped so heavily, I was starting to just look at individual strong threats. Mamoswine represented just a, the best of that. As uh, with Tailwind support and Stickweb support, there really are a lot of things working well with this Pokemon, and um, that's really about it. Uh, used Mamoswine before, called it the ex-wife, gonna keep calling it the ex-wife, and um, yeah, looking forward to using it. That's as simple as that. Uh, Crobat is my first time drafting in League format. Hell yeah. <laughs> also a Pokemon that I think is really strong. Uh, its main merit is that it, due to its elite speed tier, it can't force the cell to go uh, impish or adamant or anything with a special set and whatnot. Uh, it naturally falls very well in a lot of matchups. Uh, poison and uh, flying are a good typing nowadays, and um, I think I have the team to support it. Um, definitely, Mamoswine covers. The worst for it, but of course, Chlor's not psychic. But besides that, it actually is a fair and natural switch in. So, so I like it. But that's about it. Like, if, what it does to my team, it, it gives private, it gives possible defogging, it gets taunt, which is super important depending on the teams I'm facing. And overall, a general, I would say, good Pokemon. Um, it also has Sea Captain. Uh, Victini is also that. Uh, it is Sea Captain because of the Fly MC and Braver. Um, while its damage output is average at best, the Sea Brave Bird is monstrous. Love it. Then we got Jellicent, because why not? Um, use Jellicent far too often. Love using Jellicent. Um, it's a very good natural response to a lot of teams. Um, that's it. Like, <laughs> um, If you see me using it, you know I like using it. It's a stall breaker. I've used it as a defensive shakes at times, I use it as an offensive um, sweeper at times, but 
Stallbreaker is where it's at. It basically is a Pokemon that wins other bulkier Pokemon. It is on the slow side, but that can be remedied. Um, has a fair special attack of 85, and its mixed bulk is quite high. It's 100 HP is great. It's 17 is defense, while low, it's average when you combine with HP, and it takes special defensive hits well, at least well enough. So I like it. Um, there is nothing to it. My last two Pokemon are kind of shaky. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the one I absolutely adore, the Conk, the Gohan, Kogelder. Used this f in UBL with great success in Trick Room and in Assault Vest variant and even Iron Fist variant. Love it. Monstrous. Hard for people to deal with. Um, it's gonna do the same things here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a um, reliable trick rumor as of now and that's something I started to consider afterwards and after draft was round done whether or not I could recreate something to make Conqueror work even better because as of right now I have trick rooms with um, a Jubilee Whimsicott, Victini and Jellicent. None of them however are a dedicated trick room sweeper in their own rights and uh, I'm not gonna use Whimsicott as a trick room sweeper ever. Victini might be pushing it but yeah that's the only thing I'm kind of thinking about. Uh, we have Stick Wave after all, so we have options where a defensive Pokemon can be slower and can gather at minus one. Uh, but that's not something I go into prep for, nor something I go into um, individually count on. So, Conkeldor for now is a great Assault Vest user and a great RFS user. We'll see if we get this Shea Force Life Orb Trick Room Monster Beast go in for basically giving Blazing Squid a run for his money. But yeah, it's a great Pokemon overall, very, very underrated, and I think people getting noticed how tough that Pokemon is when they realize there are matchups that don't beat it because of Drain Punch recovering. Um, it's one of those strange situations where individually Conkeller isn't that threatening, but if it comes in a matchup it can, that they can't beat, they're forced to force switch it to 140 base power of monster, and that usually is enough to kind of kill a team at least kill him dead so, so yeah that's it like that's like the fifth time i'm saying that last pokemon bishop no idea <laughs> it's the runabout like i, I like the dark type i like the steel type bishop made total no sense so we got bishop um i'll be honest never used bishop before i have one edge when it comes to bishop that works naturally stick web do encourage defogging and that means we get a Defiant Boost. Bishop as a whole is one of those Pokemon that it isn't necessarily that speedy and it has a lot of potential issues, but um, its merit is that it hurts, its stab combination is ferocious at best, and uh, fair attacks at 125 is good, 100 is fine in defense, 70 special defense is... Uh. I'm not gonna say fine. <laughs> <laughs> Average at best. Uh, Bishop has a few sets that works. Um, first, we have the, the the common one, the Life Orb variant or the Dark MC variant, which I'm not using uh, with Soul Stand, Sucker Punch, Pursuit, and whatnot. And then with the Soul Fest use uh, or Pokemon variant, damn it, that actually could be interesting because it has matchup it deals with well, primi primarily, primarily, primarily <laughs> psychic types. Uh, so there are matchups it wins naturally, and um, I'm just going to pinpoint them. Um, the only thing it doesn't do well is that since it is a Pokemon that is built for hyper-offensive team or offensive balance, um, it means if the Pokemon is fat, it's not going to do a lot of work, at least not at first. It needs to get the team with the downs where it can sucker punch in and win. And um, that's a shaky aspect for Bishop, and that's something that may or may not actually suit me that well. I only drafted because of necessity and is whether or not how important that really is. Um, so all that kind of covered, that's the complete team and it looked like this, boom. <laughs> but yeah, as I kind of want to push that forward, um, like I said, there are a few aspects which I think are, um, like I said, drafted by necessity and they could very well be picked off just because of that very reason. I do believe this season is only like eight weeks long and stuff like that, so the changes I made may happen really early on because I am in a spot where I think I have individual issues 
the, the synergy is there. We have all the sub combinations. That all of that is fine. It's actually one of the first time when I get all the type combinations I want. However, um, the synergy is just have small synergies instead of a cooperative synergy, and that could be very bad because that means that I individually have to pick certain Pokemon for certain matchup. Uh, for example, Stumpling and Gigalith, they're always going to be combined together. Mega Garchomp can be a part of that, but doesn't have to. That's probably my only Pokemon that isn't possible, like Lumon. Whimsicott, um work well with Crobat. They are going to be paired together with possibly Mamoswine. They're always going to be those small defensive synergies. The ones that fall short on this are uh, Bishop, for obvious reason, it is not a defensive Pokemon. Uh, the other one actually being Galvantula, which as an electric type is fine, but as a bug type is kind of awful. So, and it doesn't have a natural synergy to anything. Um, I guess if I had to synergize it with something, it would actually be Crobat. And they don't pair each other that well, but uh, basically take each other's weaknesses off each other. But um, like I said, it does fall naturally. The, I have three Pokemon that are glue monsters that are working in matchup no matter what. Victini, Jellicent, Mamoswine. Those are glue mon will always be compensating for the others. Uh, but Garchomp is kind of there, Crobat is kind of there, Wimscott is kind of there. And, and Conkeldur individually strong, who cares about synergy when you are the conk. Um, but but that's an aspect too, due to me lacking potential trick room and the defensive checks that works naturally to uh, Conkeldur. It's going to be an individually strong mon for the most of the time. It's not going to rely on anything else. It is a one-man army. <laughs> I think it's going to represent just that. Um, so yeah, that's the, um, that's the draft analysis. I hope this worked. Um, I really, just, I've seen people use Smogon as their way of introducing Pokemon. Uh, so, so it's hard to, 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 to do that. I'll see if that works or not, or if I need to revamp myself. It is, after all, a rather cheap way of recording. So, <laughs> but that's it, guys. As always, thank you for watching. And, uh, well, I'm going to upload the battle in this week somewhere, the first week. I'll replay that. And um, it was interesting. It was tough, but interesting. So, that's it. Thank you for always. And I'll see you next video. Till then, take care. And, I have no idea why I did that.